Hey, Coach, uh, we'll start with questions from Leah. Leah, go ahead. Coach, we saw some outstanding defense from your team in the first quarter and into the first half. Where would you say that the breakdown started in the second half? Yeah, I think it was a combination of shot selections and turnovers. And um, on offense, the ball just got sticky. And, you know, um, obviously then they, they, they made the barrage of threes on us. John, go ahead. Chris, uh, when, when you just uh, – in terms of the, the shot selection, how do you kind of go about improving that, kind of, you know, kind of getting to the guys about – time and place and all the, and all those things. Yeah. I thought um, just got to play, you know, kind of play next action basketball, move it again, go set another screen, um, you know, throw two passes in a row. How about that for a change? And then we just, we're all trying to get, uh, I think we got a little frustrated when that, you know, when they came right back in the game after we built a bit of a lead and uh, you know, we got frustrated with the whistle a little, then they uh, we just tried to do it all by ourselves a little bit. And um uh, you know, that kind of hurt us. We just got to keep trusting. And then when we started moving the ball, which I thought we did a good job to the later part of the third quarter, then we didn't make open shots. We had some good open looks. We just didn't make them. Jace, go ahead. Hey, Chris, what were your thoughts on Jarrett and just how he looked physically out there? Um, well, yeah, it was good to see him. I mean, obviously his first game back, it was a little rough for him. Uh, I thought he was pressing a little offensively, but he competed hard, so we were happy about that. Then with, with Anthony, what's his path to being an efficient offensive player? Is it as simple as shot selection? Well, uh, I think he's got to, you know, continue to understand, like, you know, what what you know, what the game is giving him. I mean, today, every time he went downhill and got to the rim, they really couldn't stop him. Um, and he made threes late, but he didn't make threes to the – early part of the game he's kind of just out there playing right now he, he does, doesn't have a, a you know a, a plan of attack if you will and that's normal and I think that's something that'll happen for him um, you know hope, hopefully uh, as this season unfolds and I'm sure going forward Dane go ahead hey coach we talked a little bit um, before the game about you know trying to you kind of win it on defense and maybe sacrifice a little bit in terms of spacing. It seemed like in the first half, kind of both of those things happened where yeah. the defense was good and maybe the, there was uh, some lost spacing there. Is it, was that fair to say? Yeah, there was some, you know, there was some times we were ta on top of each other, but I thought we did a really good job offensively when we were in the first quarter in particular, you know, got, got to the rim. I think we missed four or five of our first six or seven shots were layups and we kind of just didn't finish very well. And again, we, you know, we needed all these buckets. I thought we should have been up 10 at halftime. And then with Josh, were you, is that just kind of what you want him to be doing is, is just finding that screen there and roll into the basket, maybe then spraying out to the corner. It looked a little bit, looked a little different, I guess, than when he played more on the wing in the past. Uh, you talking about Josh Akogi? Yes, Josh Akogi. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I mean, we, we kind of treat him a little bit like a big sometimes. And um you know, we just that, that's part of the spacing that we have to you know, compensate for. I thought he played well. I thought Josh played very well today. So. Rick, go ahead. Coach, you have an extremely young team and they're in the middle of a losing streak. To what extent does a lack of confidence corrode the aspects of your game? Where, where specifically do you think that really hurts? Well, I think you see it in, in shot making. You know, the game tightens up and we – you know, we, we we don't we need to make a shot, and maybe we don't. Um, if you have a bit of a lead, you feel you have that comfort zone, uh, and, and you know, just when teams make a run on you, you gotta you gotta fight back, and uh, that's what we're gonna have to be. We got to learn how to be a little more resilient right now. John, go ahead. Chris, in terms of that first half defense, what what did you see there that was working, and do you think you can find some things to to build on going forward here from that? Yeah, I like that we were into the ball in the first half. We were doing a great job on Beal. I thought we were locked into the game plan there. Um, the only thing that hurt us really in the first half was the offensive rebounds and, and some fouling. Uh, we got to get better with our fouls. We we foul a lot. We we you know we let we bail the offensive player out with some cheap fouls, and we got to we got to rebound a little better. We got to get our our smalls our perimeters to come in and rebound a better. Awesome. Thanks, coach. Appreciate your time. Okay, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll stay on here for our player availability. Um, players that were requested were uh, JC, 
uh, Josh and Vando. Hey, Josh, uh, we'll start with questions from John. John, go ahead. Hey, Josh, you, you're making Beal work a lot, especially in the first half there. Just what were you trying to do against him to, to make it as tough as possible? Um, and he still had 34 points. But um, yeah. I tried to um, really just stay attached, stay attached as much as possible, make it hard for him, contest every shot. Uh, make sure I try to, you know, poke with the ball, just make it as uncomfortable as I possibly could for him. And Josh, how, how do you think, how are you guys handling this kind of change in this crazy week just as a whole here? I mean, it's been three tough games for you in a row now after after the change. Just how would you characterize how, how guys are handling it? I mean, the change coaches in the middle of a um, oh, uh, uh, kind of a way stand is, is, is tough for, you know, both coaching and for us. But um. Me personally, I mean, I've had a lot of crazy weeks <laughs> since, since my since my rookie year. Um, but um, you know, you just gotta stay ready. Um, and NBA is just a it's a league of opportunity, um, not only for obviously players, but for for I mean, obviously coaches. So I mean, we just gotta stay ready. And um, when our numbers call, try our best to win the game. Because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who's playing and who's coaching. Uh, the job is to score more points than the other team, and that's a language everybody understands. What's your initial impressions of of Coach Finch, Josh, and just what he's trying to do with you guys in in tough circumstances here? Um, he wants us to trust each other, share the ball, share the wealth, and just uh, you know play the right way overall. He wants to play fast. He wants to obviously you know have a little more emphasis on the defensive end, but still you know it's all about us um, offensively. He wants to obviously increase the pace that we've been playing at. So that's kind of his approach to everything. Jace, go ahead. Hey Josh, tonight you were back in the starting lineup and, you know, tasked with guarding the other team's best perimeter player. That's a role we've seen you in many times. How much of that familiarity helped you kind of get into the flow of a game? I mean, that's what I do. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's what I do. That kind of gets me being able to, you know, defend, get, opens up, you know, everything else that I, you know, do offensively and the rest. So, um, you know, it's, it's not a different territory for me. I'm very familiar with that and very familiar with a lot of these players that I'm going to, you know, have to guard. Then you've talked about, you know, this is not the first weird week you've had um, with, with Minnesota. In your career, having this much turnover, how much of a challenge is that when there just hasn't been a whole lot of consistency here in Minnesota while you've been here? Uh, I mean, it's not a challenge. You know, you start to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, and it just makes you continue just to play with the edge. You know, just continue to fight every day. Um, uh, but, we're, you know, obviously from the front office, you know, I know they're trying to win. You know, they're trying to you know, make Minnesota a, you know, competing franchise. And, you know, we just got to, you know, whoever's here, we just got to do whatever we got to do just to win games. Dane, go ahead. Josh, coach was just talking a little bit about tonight, how offensively they were using you a little bit more like a big, obviously that's something, you know, we've talked about a little bit over the course of the year. Do you feel like you're getting comfortable in some more of those maybe screen setting opportunities, rolling to the basket, maybe like more of a traditional big? I mean, I never try to box myself in. You know, I'm a basketball player, forward, small, um, forward, guard, center, whatever you want to call it. You know, I go out there and play basketball, and I try my best to make plays. So if that's slipping to the basket, that's popping to the three-point line, if that's penetrating, kicking, or if that's staying in the dunker, trying to dunk the ball, you know, whatever it is, you know, I can do it all. So that's something to try to fit into any type of role. All right. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Appreciate it. Hey, JC, uh, we'll get started with questions from John. John, go ahead. Jared, it's been a little while since you've been out there. Just how did you feel in your first kind of game action back? Man, it's a blessing to be back on the court. And, you know, it's never a good feeling to lose. And, you know, I want to go out there and try to compete for my team and try to get a win for my team. So um, it was good to be back, though, have a healthy game and, you know, just build from it. What's this process been like for you, Jared, in terms of trying to work your babe way back from the injury? Then there's also a coaching change in the middle of it. Just how kind of hectic and chaotic has it been for you? 
Uh, it's just life. Uh, adversity comes, changes come, and, you know, uh, you have to adjust. So I'm just adjusting to the new coach and, you know, building relationships with the with the new coach and our team getting adjusted to him. And then just having an injury is, is never fun, but that's a part of life. Like I said, it's adversity. So, you know, I had to fight to come back. A lot of things and a lot of people in my corner has supported me the whole way. And a lot of coaches have helped me get back. Jace, go ahead. Hey, Jared, what was the rehab process like coming back with that ankle? It was, a, it was an everyday process, two, three times a day. And, you know, just building from that, from, you know, barely being able to walk on it to starting to get in the pool, to the R2G, to getting back on the court, doing workouts and stuff like that. So it was a long process, I felt like, but, you know, it was a, it was a healthy one. And, you know, we took our time with it to make sure I'm fully recovered before I came back. Dane, go ahead. Jared, back at the beginning of the season when you when you were really rolling, what, what would you say that the, the the biggest part um, of that was in kind of inspiring that momentum you started the season with? Um, I mean, I just feel like I got a passion to win. So when I go out there every night, I try to win. And, you know, it's just the work I put in. I rely on the work I put in. I put in, you know, a lot of work. And that's what I rely on. That's what I fall back on. And that's where my confidence comes from is how hard I work. So, you know, I always try to put in – the most hard work I could put in to, you know, produce on the court. So would you say you came into the season very, very prepared? And that's why I kind of showed up right away in the, the, the pre those preseason games right away, maybe as being as prepared as anybody on the roster? Yeah, I feel like I'm always prepared. And that's a part of, you know, how, how I've always been is you know, if you got some coming for it, uh, I'm in the NBA, it's a dream come true. So I feel like I'm always prepared to be able, you know, to produce and, you know, help my team win. So. I'm always putting in the work to be prepared. Awesome. Thanks, JC. Appreciate your time. Appreciate it, y'all. Thanks, Jared. Thank you. Hey, Vando, uh, we'll start with questions from John. Go ahead. Jared, just, um, I mean, you guys played really well defensively in the first half. What kind of happened in the third quarter that, that let it get away from you there? Uh, I would say it was our offense just led – bad shots led to us not being able to get our defense set. And they just got out and ran, uh, transition. And, uh, yeah, like I said, our offense got stagnant, so that's what caused us to be, you know, uh, take a step back on defense. And uh, they started pushing the transition and, you know, uh, you know, putting pressure putting pressure on us and, that, you know, on that end. Is, the, is this a night where you especially miss Malik for his shot making just when guys, you know, can't get a good look or can't knock it down to, to have him out on the perimeter, being able to hit, hit shots the way that he does? Uh, I mean, for sure. Anytime you got to, you know, we definitely missing the 20 point score, you know, with a shooter like Malik, it definitely would have helped us tonight. Uh, just, you know, spread the floor, open up more opportunities for guys. But uh, like I said, we got a lot of good capable shooters on this team as well. Um, we was, we was getting the shots we look now. We just got to, you know, convert and, you know, uh, you know, start making, start making shots. Chase, go ahead. Hey, Jared, seven-game losing streak for you guys, coaching change at the start of the week. Where's just morale at within the team right now? Um, I would say, we, you know, spirits are still high. We're still positive. Um, like you said, it's a coach, coaching change, a different system. So it's an adjustment for everybody. You know, um, we feel like the process is still right. You know, we're moving in the right direction. And, um, you know, like I said, uh, we're, st we're, st we're getting better each game, I feel like. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's not the time, you know, to get down on ourselves, you know, a couple losses. So we just continue to play hard and, you know, just learn from each game and just try to be better. It's a challenge in the sense that it felt like you guys were playing a little bit better and then the coaching change comes and now there's more adjustments. Um, does that does it, Do you almost have to take a step back then to, to take a couple more steps forward from that? I wouldn't say that. Just, that's just part of basketball, part of the business, you know. Uh, you know, it's part of just being professional. We still come in and got to do our jobs. Uh, still got to come in and compete, work, and, uh, you know, just try to be better than uh, than we was uh, yesterday. So that's, that's still the goal. The goal hasn't changed no matter, you know, the coach or lineup changes. Um, we still try to put each other in the best position, you know, to compete and win. Dane, go ahead. Jared, it feels like um, when you and Josh are out there together defensively, obviously there's just a ton of energy um, in that group. And, and Coach was talking about how 
maybe a way to make up for Malik's scoring absence is to is to win a little bit more on defense. Do you, do you feel that you and Josh can kind of instigate that? Oh, for sure. I feel like uh, with both of us on the floor, uh, we're kind of just anchored the defense, you know, um, us being able to bring that intensity and just bring that uh, defensive presence, you know, him more so on the perimeter than me, just kind of playing that low man and being the, the anchor. So um, I think it showed today, you know, first half for sure. Uh, we started the game a little better defensively, uh, more active. And um, so, uh, yeah, honestly, I feel like us playing together is going to help on the defensive end. Could you explain to us who don't know as much how important it is for Josh to be, you know, connecting on the perimeter to a, to a player like Bradley Beal like that and, and doing those rear view contests and staying there, what that opens up for you guys defensively? Man, it opens up everything. You know, uh, I think Josh did a hell of a job on him tonight. You know, just staying attached to him and making making him getting some tough looks. And uh, anytime you got a guy like that, that can, you know, you know, obviously he's the best, you know, leading scorer in the NBA right now. So, uh, you know, I applaud Josh for taking that challenge and, and uh, just not giving him nothing easy. And um, by him being able to kind of hold his own one-on-one -on -one and, you know, rear view contests and fight over screens, um, it didn't allow Bradley Beal to uh, distort our defense. So, uh, like I said, I think Josh did a hell of a job on him uh, today. All right. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate your time. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, everyone. Uh, that'll do it for tonight. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow.